Hey guys, Will at third and long. Welcome to my week 11 NFL predictions video. We'll be looking at who we think will win, who we think will lose, and what we predict the final scores will be. Hit that like button and subscribe, and let's get started. So kicking off week 11, Thursday night game at 8.15, we have the Cincinnati Bengals at 5-4 and four versus the Baltimore Ravens at 7-3. and three. So the Ravens come in as three and a half point favorites here. Now there's a lot of pressure on both teams Both teams coming off of losses. Bengals are 5-4, and so they need to get some wins racked up here. They don't want to miss the playoffs. They cannot afford to drop to 5-5 and and be 500 at week 11 of the season. For the Ravens, they are at home. They did have a loss this past weekend. But looking at the stats for both of these teams, the Bengals are averaging 20.2 points per game. Baltimore, 27 points per game. For the defense, Baltimore is only giving up 15.7 points per game. So the Ravens here have a top 10 offense. They have a top 10 defense. They have Lamar Jackson. They have Andrews. They have the playmakers to control this game. Because the Bengals, we don't know which Bengals team we are going to get. But there's pressure on both teams to get the win here. Because Baltimore kind of keeps flirting with the second to third best team. Then they have a bad game. Then they have a really good game. So they're kind of flip-flopping back and forth. Bengals have been banged up the whole year, but they have a lot of pressure. They have way more pressure than the Ravens. Like I said, they cannot drop to 500. But I'm going to go with the home team to squeak out the win here. I have the Ravens winning 24-21, not covering the spread. But like I said, the Bengals can win this game. It's just which Bengals team is going to show up. The next game we have at 1 p.m. now on Sunday, we have the 6-3 Steelers. So props to Mike Tomlin's team. They have a god-awful offense, but they have been able to get to to 6-3 on the season versus the Cleveland Browns coming in at 6-3. So the Browns are coming off of that win versus the Ravens last weekend when they rallied in the fourth quarter to win. But the biggest drawback here is as of this morning, Deshaun Watson is now out for the season. He's been uh, one of those guys to where does he play, does he not play. So the Browns are pretty used to him not playing. So it's not like this really comes as a surprise to them. They are de- they are definitely prepared to play without him at quarterback. But he was the main thing that carried them to their win this past weekend. He will be gone. That's a massive loss. Steelers, they really have no offense. So they come into this game averaging 17.3 points per game. So definitely one of the worst offenses in the league. Browns 23.8 points per game. But both teams have really good defenses. Browns have a top five defense, only giving up 18.9 points per game. So the defense for both teams should definitely keep them in the game. This is kind of a game where you could go either way. Steelers are one point favorites here, so the game is virtually a pick em. But I'm going to go with the Steelers to get the win. Not because they're necessarily a good team, but they have a good defense. And the Browns have the loss of Deshaun Watson. I think that can hold them back here. I have the Steelers winning this game in just a horrible, sloppy, boring game. 17-14. to So I have them covering. I'm not confident in that pick, though. Because like I said, the Browns are used to playing without Deshaun Watson. So this is a big hit. But it's a hit that they've definitely been prepared for the whole season. Because he's missed like three to four games. Next game we have at 1 p.m. on Fox, we have the 3-7 Chicago Bears versus the Detroit Lions at 7-2. Detroit comes in as nine-point favorites here, so a pretty massive spread there. So what do I think is going to happen in this game? That pretty much all comes down to, is Justin Fields playing? As of right now, we don't know. It's the same story every single weekend. He is going to play up till Friday, and then he's not playing, so we'll just have to wait to see, but... If he doesn't play, that's a big difference there. So he was having a pretty decent year running and throwing the ball prior to getting hurt. If he plays, he should be able to get them some first downs, get the Bears some points. The biggest problem with the Bears is their defense is completely horrible. They give up 25.5 points per game, whereas the Lions, they have a top 10 offense. They have a top 15 defense. So so their offense is scoring 26.8 points per game. They have the playmakers, they have Goff at quarterback, they have Montgomery at running back, they have 
Brown at wide receiver. So this team is loaded. They have the playmakers and they have a pretty decent defense. So they're just the better team. So I definitely see why they are favored by nine. And I have the Lions getting the win here. 31 to 20. So they are covering. The only thing that could maybe close the score in is Justin Fields. He is the X factor. I don't think that he can get them the win as of right now because the Lions just have the way better roster. But if he plays, that could definitely change if they cover the game or not. The next game we have coming up at 1 p.m. on Fox, we have the 4-5 and five LA Chargers versus the 3-6 and six Green Bay Packers. Chargers come into this game as three-point favorites here. So with this game, you have the Chargers who have a lot of offensive weapons. They have Herbert, they have Eckler, they have Allen. They don't have Williams, but they don't need him as of right now because the Packers' defense has a lot of holes. Packers give up 20 points per game and their offense is only averaging 19.9 points per game. So although the Chargers do not have a good defense at all, actually it's pretty bad, the Packers do not have the offense to be able to take advantage of that. So a lot of things are definitely in the Chargers' favors here because they're averaging 27 points per game. And the big difference here is the running game. So the Packers' rush defense is really bad. And the Chargers have Eckler. So I think they're going to run the ball down the Packers' throat. Whenever they need first downs, whenever they need vertical plays, that's when Herbert comes in. So I have the Chargers getting the win here. And I have them winning 27-20 to and covering that spread. Packers just are not very good. Jordan Love is not having a good year at all. Next game we have at 1 p.m. on CBS, we have the Las Vegas Raiders at 5-5 five and five versus the Miami Dolphins sitting at 6-3. and three. So the Dolphins are coming off the bye week. This spread is massive for a program. They are favored by 13.5 points here. So with the Raiders, they did fire Josh McDaniels. They have Antonio Pierce as the acting head coach right now. There are 2-0 since he's taken over. So he's definitely lit a fire in them. They've won every single game. But at some point, that's going to go off track. At some point, they're going to lose. This team is pretty good as a rostered team, but they're not very good on the field. They only average 17.2 points per game, and they're facing the Miami Dolphins, averaging 31.7 points per game. So Miami is going to score, and they are, they are going to score quickly. So if you want to beat the Dolphins, you have to be capable of getting into a shootout. Raiders are not capable of doing that. They are a run-first team, but the Dolphins actually have a pretty decent rush defense. So that's going to force the Raiders to have to score. They will not be able to run the clock out and keep the ball out of the Dolphins' hands. So they're going to have to go vertical, and that's just not going to work because the Dolphins, they have too many offensive weapons. They have Tua, Mostert, Hill, Waddle, Berrios. The list goes on and on. This team is going to score. They're going to score fast. Raiders cannot keep up. That's why that spread is so massive. And I have the Dolphins cruising to the win here, 34 to 20. So they will cover that spread. I don't think the spread will stay that high going into Sunday. It'll probably drop, but it really doesn't matter because even if it goes up, the Dolphins will probably cover it. The next game we have is at 1 p.m. on Fox, and this is another completely lopsided game, just like the Dolphins game. We have the 6-3 Dallas Cowboys versus the 1-8 and eight Panthers. Dallas is 10 and a half point favorites here. So just looking at the offenses here, Dallas is averaging 29.9 points per game and the Panthers 17 points per game. The Dolphins are only giving up 18.3 points per game. Panthers giving up 26.9 points per game. So the Panthers are basically getting torched every single game. Dolphins, sorry, the Cowboys have a top five defense. They have a top two offense. So they're second only to the Dolphins. They can score. They can shut you down. They are one of the best rounded teams in the country. So really the Panthers have no chance on paper in this game. So that's why the spread is so spread out there. So you have Dak Prescott. He's been hot since they lost to the 49ers. He's looked good the last four to five weeks. You have Pollard out running back. Running game has kind of fallen off, but it's there if they need it. And then you have C.D. Lamb, who's just basically been going off the last three weeks, one of the best wide receivers in the country this year. So Cowboys should definitely cruise to the win versus the Panthers here. I have them winning 30-17. This game will not be close at all. So they're going to cover that spread too. 
Next game we have at 1 p.m. on CBS, we have the Tennessee Titans sitting at 3-6 and six versus the Jacksonville Jaguars at 6-3. and three. Jacksonville, seven-point favorites here. So, Titans. Will Levis had two, his first two starts looked pretty decent. His last two games have looked pretty sloppy, so he kind of came down to earth there. But really, they don't have the offensive playmakers to really transition into a, a offensively focused team. The Jaguars. So, they had a bye, then they hosted the 49ers this past weekend. They got curb stomped at home, so they have to rebound here. Trevor Lawrence is having a pretty bad year so far. So he's got 2,100 yards, 9 touchdowns, and 6 picks. 9 touchdowns, 6 picks. It's week 11. He definitely needs to step those stats up because he's not having a good junior season in the NFL. They still have a decent running game. They have some weapons at wide out. When you look at the team stats here, you have Tennessee averaging 17.1 points per game. That's not very good. Jacksonville, 21.8. That's serviceable. Both teams have okay defenses. Tennessee gives up 20 points per game. Jacksonville, 21.1 points per game. Jags are the heavy favorites here. They should win the game, but you never know because it all rests on Trevor Lawrence. He has to stop fumbling the ball. He has to stop throwing picks. He has yet to get 300 yards so far this year. This probably won't be the game that he does that because Tennessee has a pretty good defense, but they have to get him back on track. Either way, I have the Jags winning right now, 24 to 17. So as of right now, that's a push because the spread just changed from last night. But I have them winning 24 to 17. Next game we have at 1 p.m. on CBS, we have the Arizona Cardinals sitting at 2 and 8 versus the Texans sitting at 5 and 4. Houston is the 5-point favorites here. So when you look at this game, it kind of has the build up to potentially be a shootout match here. When you look at the Cardinals. So their offense was doing nothing for the last few weeks. Kyler Murray did come back this past weekend. He had a really good fourth quarter. He got them their second win in his first start coming back. Seems like he hasn't played in like three years, but he came back, looked really good. He he, he was kind of rusty at first, but definitely got things going. So props to the Cardinals for him coming back. I don't know if they're going to be trading in this offseason. I don't know if they're trying to bomb to get the number one pick. I don't really know what their plans are for the future. But if they're trying to win with him, so trying not to get a top three pick and they are trying to be competitive, then they definitely have to get vertical and get aggressive. For Houston, they have the surprise of the year. C.J. Stroud having the offensive rookie of the year. He's number five in the MVP race right now. Having one of the best rookie years ever. Guy has 15 touchdowns, two picks, 2,600 yards. Having a great year so far. They have a lot of weapons. Now, both teams don't necessarily have good defenses here. Cardinals have the worst one, giving up 26.3 points per game. But like I said, this game kind of feels like it has the buildup to be a potential shootout. Houston is the favorites here. I have them getting the win. I have Houston winning this game 30-24. to So I have them covering that spread, pretty high scoring game. I don't think the Cardinals have the weapons to be able to keep up with the Texans as of right now. We don't really know because Kyler Murray has only played one game and that was his first game in like two years. But as of right now, Texans have the better team on paper. Next game we have coming up at 4.05 p.m. on Fox. We have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sitting at 4-5 and five versus the 49ers at 6-3. and three. San Francisco 11.5 point favorites here. So another pretty large spread. So with this game, you have Tampa Bay. They have a top 10 defense. They only give up 19.2 points per game, but they only score 19.8 points per game. But Baker's having a pretty decent year so far this year. They do have some weapons at wide out, and they have a really good defensive line, and they, they have a really good rush defense. Looking at San Francisco, so they had the bye week, and then they came back this past weekend, and they beat the crap out of Jacksonville in Jacksonville. Really strong win for them, really good performance by Brock Purdy. Their game plan is very simple. Run the ball, run the ball run the ball. Whenever they have to throw short passes from Brock Purdy, don't do anything to try to win the game. Just don't cost in the game. San Francisco is averaging 28 points per game. So they also have a top five offense. They have a top three defense. So just like the Cowboys, one of the best rounded teams in the country right now, 49ers just have way too many weapons. They have Purdy. They have McCaffrey. They have Kittle. They have Ayuk. They have Debo. 
The list goes on and on and on, and they have defensive weapons, and they just picked up Chase Young, so that makes their pass rush even better. Buccaneers, basically, they're going to be forced to have to go vertical. You will not be able to run the ball on the 49ers. That's why the spread is so far right there. I have the 49ers getting the win here. I have them winning 27 to 17. So I have them not covering the spread just because Tampa Bay has a very good defense. Do not sleep on their defense. Baker, a lot is on his shoulders here because you can have good Baker, you can have bad Baker, and there's zero middle ground. So Baker can come into this game and throw three picks. He can come into this game and throw three touchdowns. We don't really know, but I have them not covering the spread only based off of Tampa Bay's defense as of right now. Next at 425 on CBS, we have the 4-5 and five Jets versus the 5-5 five and five Bills. Buffalo is seven-point favorites here. So this is an in-state matchup here, a rivalry game. The Jets, Zach Wilson. You know, they should have went after and they should have picked up Carson Wentz. That's their fault this year. Nothing against Zach Wilson, but I would rather take my risk with Carson Wentz either throwing me, you know, going three touchdowns and two picks, but at least he'll get 250, 300 yards than going with Zach Wilson and, and him having one touchdown, one pick, and only throwing for 140 yards. What's the point of that? They have been relying on their great top 10 defense, only giving up, as of right now, 19.1 points per game. That's great. That can win you games, but they've shown you cannot win with only a defense. This team was built for Rodgers. Once he got hurt, they should have started shopping around for better quarterbacks. You had Dobbs out there. You had Wentz out there. They went with no one, and they are basically paying the consequences of that, only scoring 16 points per game. That's not going to cut it versus the Bills. The Bills are averaging 26.2 points per game, giving up 18.4. So they have a top 10 defense also, but they have a top 10 offense. They can definitely move the ball, but the Bills have their own problems. They have a lot of turnovers. They have butterfingers. Josh Allen's throwing picks nonstop. This team is very sloppy. They're kind of spiraling, basically. So since they lost to Jacksonville, they've never rebounded, and they've just been sputtering down the drain since then. This offseason, there's going to be getting fired. Uh, they're, 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 there's going to be a lot of people getting fired. Now, they did fire the offensive coordinator, Dorsey. That's not enough. Head coach, you got to go. You wasted Josh Allen and Diggs here. But the Bills have a lot of weapons. They have Allen. They have Cook. They have Diggs. They should be able to control the Jets. Josh Allen could end up in, in this game, you know, throwing two picks. That is possible. But he'll probably also get three touchdowns. I have the Bills winning this one. 24 to 13, covering the spread, getting semi back on track, but not enough to save the head coach's job. Next game we have at 425 on CBS, we have the 6-3 Seattle Seahawks versus the 3-6 LA Rams. Seattle, one-point favorites here, so the game is virtually a pick -em. For Seattle, they're another one of those teams that kind of flip-flops back and forth. Lost two weeks ago, had a really good performance this past weekend. They are a good team. They average 22.2 points per game. They give up 22.3 points per game. So they're basically a above average team, but a very serviceable, efficient team. They are very good. Whereas the Rams, they only score 19.8 points per game. They're giving up 22.7 points per game. So they definitely have some defensive woes. Will Stafford be playing? I don't know. The they guy's been banged up for about three to four weeks. If he doesn't play, it will be Carson Wentz. The guy that the Jets should have signed. He is pretty new to the team, but he can sling it. He can run it. So he might be able to get some first downs, score some points. That's why this game is virtually a pick -em. But like I said, Seahawks are a very well-rounded team. They are above average on both sides of the ball. I have the Seahawks getting the win here, though. 27-20 to 20 covering the spread. The Rams just have way too many question marks. Next game we have at 8.20 on NBC, we have the 6-4 Minnesota Vikings with Josh Dobbs being 2-0 as the Vikings starter. Basically picking right up where Kirk Cousins left off. They kind of have a little Cinderella story going on right now. That's So most of that was without Cousins, without Jefferson. So pretty good performance. And then you have the Denver Broncos at 4-5. Denver is the favorites here by 2.5. So this is one of those games to where... Vikings have the Cinderella story going on. Josh Dobbs shows up and he just starts winning games. That has to end at some point. The guy's only been on the roster for like eight days. That's not going to continue. 
At some point, the winning streak has to end. Vikings come in here. They average 23.3 points per game. For Denver, they average 21.8 points per game. Russell Wilson is, is basically just not doing anything to lose in the game. Having a very efficient year. He has 1,800 yards. Pretty low yardage there, but he has 18 touchdowns and only four picks. So he's being very efficient with when he throws the ball. Their defense, though, giving up 27.6 points per game. That's kind of inflated because they gave up 70 points to the Dolphins. So that kind of blows that out of proportion. They've played a lot better since then. This team has been better on paper than their performance has been record-wise. But I have the Broncos getting the win here. Now, this game could go either way. But I'm just banking on the fact that at some point the run for the Vikings has to end. I have the Broncos getting the win 24 to 21 and covering that spread. The next game that we'll be looking at is at 1 p.m. on Fox. We have the Giants at 2 and 8 versus the Washington Commanders at 4 and 6. So Washington is coming into this game as nine and a half point favorites here. That's a pretty big spread. Now the Giants have a lot of problems going on. Daniel Jones is out for the year. They are 2 and 8. They have a horrible offense. They are only averaging 11.8 points per game. That is the worst professional football offense I have ever seen. That's pretty bad. And their defense is giving up 26.6 points per game. So they're last on offense and second to third or last on defense. So they really have absolutely nothing going for them. Washington has a pretty decent offense. So they're averaging 21.7 points per game, but they're also giving up 27.4 points per game. So they're giving up a lot of points. So... They can definitely score, but they could give up some points even to the horrible Giants offense. The Commanders have Sam Howell at quarterback. He has 2,800 yards, 17 touchdowns, 9 picks. So he is actually having a pretty decent year, but he is the most sacked quarterback and the most hit quarterback in the league. So he is under a lot of pressure, but thankfully for him, the Giants have a lot of holes. He will be able to score the ball. Look for Washington to get back on track here to get a win. Ron Rivera will probably get fired no matter what. He's not a very good head coach, but I have the Commanders winning this game, and I have them coming in and grabbing the win 24-17, to so not covering the spread, but they are getting the win. And the final game that we will be looking at is our Monday night game at 8.15 on ABC. We have the Philadelphia Eagles at 8-1 versus the Kansas City Chiefs sitting at 7-2. Chiefs are three-point favorites here. So this is a rematch of last year's Super Bowl. Kansas City is the three-point favorites here. So when you look at the stats for both of these teams, Philadelphia, they are averaging 28 points per game. So they have a top five offense right now they are giving up 21.7 points per game kansas city they are they are averaging 23.1 points per game but they have a top five defense number three giving up 15.9 points per game now the thing with the eagles they had the best offensive line in the country last year it's not as good this year but it's still top three Whereas the Chiefs have one of the best D-lines in the country right now. So it's basically strength on strength. We have the O-line for the Eagles versus the D-line for the Chiefs. With the Chiefs offense, so they have Patrick Mahomes, they have Travis Kelsey. Outside of that, a lot of question marks. Pacheco at running back, a lot of questions in the wide receiver core. A lot of guys dropping balls, a lot of butterfingers for the Eagle. They have very skilled position players. They have Swift at running back. They have Brown, and they have Smith at wideout. So they definitely have the weapons to score some points. But like I said, it's strength on strength as of right now. When it comes down to this game, I actually have the Chiefs pulling up back-to-back victories versus the Eagles. I am going to go with the Chiefs to win 28-23 to cover the spread And like I said, to win back-to-back games versus the Eagles. So that's my breakdown of the Week 11 NFL games. That's my predictions for Week 11. Sitting on bye weeks this week, we have the Falcons, Colts, Patriots, and the Saints. Hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks.